A pair of solar power crusaders has embarked on a mission to fly around the world without using a single drop of fossil fuel. Check out their photovoltaic flying machine this week on Light Matters. This is Light Matters for March 11, 2015. I'm your host, James Lowe. This week, we'll drop by Abu Dhabi, where the Solar Impulse 2 recently took off on a solar-powered flight around the world. We'll also learn about the latest 2D wonder material and an effort to recruit the next generation of photonics technicians. But first, industrial photonics editor Rod Pedrotti looks at a promising new approach for flexible displays. Organic LED, or OLED technology, is still fairly new as far as displays are concerned. But with OLED displays becoming increasingly common in smartphones and flat panel TVs, the technology is not really state of the art anymore. Or is it? Now, VTT Technical Research Center in Finland has figured out a way to print OLED elements onto not only glass and steel surfaces, but also onto flexible, extremely thin plastic film. Although this type of film is new, it's still being produced using traditional gravure and screen printing methods. But in VTT's process, an OLED light surface that measures two-tenths of a millimeter thick is printed onto the film. Now that light surface has electrodes and multiple polymer layers embedded within it, and each of those are only a few hundred nanometers thick. Traditional LEDs have three times the luminosity of their organic counterparts, but OLEDs can do something LEDs just can't do. They emit light across the entire surface area, whereas LED is a spotlight technology. VTT's plastic OLED film will only work for about one year as of now, and that's because the polymer's materials are degraded over time by oxygen and moisture. Its lifetime will be extended as screen protector technology, as well as the applications themselves, continue to grow. One application being looked into right now is the use of OLED light as a medium for data transmission, and if you're already aware of the term, the Internet of Things, you know that we're going to see a lot more from these printed, flexible, organic diode-laced surfaces. Thanks, Rod. Next, we go to the University of Minnesota, where researchers are experimenting with a new 2D material that could work better for optical communications than graphene or even germanium. Black phosphorus has been known for more than a century, but its potential as a semiconductor with a tunable band gap only came to light within the past year. According to the Minnesota team, the light detecting and emitting properties of black phosphorus make it a good candidate for use in optoelectronics. The researchers use black phosphorus to build optical circuits capable of transmitting data at up to 3 gigabits per second using the near-infrared telecommunications band. They said it operated well under bias and with very low dark current. The research was published in Nature Photonics. After the break, we'll learn about a new push to get young people interested in photonics careers and we'll take a spin in a solar-powered airplane. Calling all biophotonics innovators! Photonics Media is seeking presenters for Biophotonic Imaging for Medicine, a free digital conference to be held on June 11th. Abstracts are due by March 20th. You can find out more at photonics.com bioconference. Welcome back. On the employment front this week, a recent study found that photonics technicians are in short supply. But one group is working with two-year colleges around the U.S. to fix that. Photonic Spectra Editor Justine Murphy has more. The National Center for Optics and Photonics Education, or OPTEC, says U.S. employers require 800 new photonics technicians each year, but that two-year colleges produce fewer than 300 graduates in that field annually. That means employers in the photonics industry are increasingly forced to hire unprepared technicians or move their operations offshore. With funding from the National Science Foundation, OPTEC recently awarded four $15,000 grants to counteract this trend. Northwestern Michigan College and Baker College in Michigan, Central New Mexico Community College, and the Puerto Rico Photonics Institute will use the grants and their own matching funds to hire recruiters and develop marketing plans. The goal? To get high school students excited about using lasers and optoelectronics in fields such as manufacturing, medicine, communications, defense, and lighting. Thanks, Justine. Our last story today starts in Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. And it ends there, too, or at least that's the plan after about 22,000 miles of solar-powered flight. Swiss explorers Bertrand Picard and André Borschberg took off in their Solar Impulse 2 aircraft March 9th. They plan to fly it around the world in about five months. They're not racing with Phileas Fogg. Instead, 
They're planning on making several stops along the way, including four in the U.S., to promote sustainable energy technologies. The plane weighs about as much as a car, but has a wingspan wider than a 747. Those wings are covered with 17,248 solar cells that power four propellers and recharge four lithium polymer batteries, which allow the plane to fly at night. It can reach altitudes of about 28,000 feet and a top speed of about 60 miles per hour. In 2013, Picard and Borschberg flew an earlier version of their plane from San Francisco to New York in 10 weeks. This time, they'll be crossing two oceans, which will involve several days of continuous flying inside a 3.8 cubic meter unheated cockpit. Better them than me. That's it for this week's show. Leave us a comment below and let us know what you thought of this week's episode. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next week on Light Matters.